We're glad that you're able to join us. Before the message starts, will you take a moment to pray? Pray for God's clarity. Pray for God's understanding as you hear the message. Also take a moment to read the scripture. Read the scripture so that you can see the words in a different way. Hear the words in a different way. So that God's Holy Spirit is able to open up your hearts and God's transforming love then is able to come through the message. As you are able, will you please make a note of at least one thing that you will apply to your life this week based on the message that you hear? Let's get into it. On the way here this morning, I prayed to God and I said, Lord, how are you going to surprise me today? How will I experience your love new? Who will I meet? How will I see you in the lives of others? And, and God is amazing. And just, you know, what a, what a blessing to, to, to have musicians and, and, and that can and lead us in worship and songs that have been written that allow our spirits to just be opened up and sense who God is. Just sometimes in, in those prayers, I would just, just want those prayers to continue to go on and on as, as God love, God's love just kind of fills us and soaks over us. Sometimes when we're in the, in the presence of God, there's really no words that can explain and, and can, words that can that even come to mind just as you feel that. And maybe you didn't feel that during this song. I don't know. I know God's here and God's spirit's here. And that's one of the challenges we have as a person of faith as we go through our lives because I have rough days too. There's times where I feel like God is so distant. When we look around and, 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 you know, Pastor Kay and I deal with so much sickness and pain and death and challenges that it can impact us. But we also serve a God and love a God who, that even in the midst of all of that, continues to bring forth new life, continues to bring us light and ways to see things when we can't see what's around us and happening to us. And so we all face those tough times, but how do we continue to, to live our faith into those? And that's part of what we start to understand here in this story, in this parable of the 10 lepers um, that is on, we only find in the Gospel of Luke because here Jesus helps us to understand our faith and how we live our faith. And it does deal with gratitude so that even in these times that are tough, how can we be thankful? You know, my father, who will be 84 in December, you know, we take him to the emergency room. I know the end of his life is sooner rather than later and that the body can only take so much but even in those times of unknowing when we're waiting and trying to figure out, I'm able to give God thanks for the facility, for the nurses, for the doctors, for the opportunity to be there, for that opportunity to even be with them while he's scared, frightened, and wondering. And it's that gratitude that keeps bringing us back into God and, and we sort of ride on that spirit of hope knowing that God will bring to us and to the person what we need. And as we start to understand our faith, and as we start to live in our faith, we realize that, that salvation and that saving and healing is more than just physical. But it's the healing of our spirit. It's helping us see that we are part of something so much larger. And so in this Gospel of Luke in the story, our, our, our scripture comes from Luke 17, verses 11 through 19, and it's where Jesus cleanses the ten lepers. And, and as we read this, there's almost two stories within this parable. Now, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, and he was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. 
Now understand that the, the colonies, the lepers, had to um, be kept at a distance. And so they sort of formed their own colonies, and they were kept away from others. It was sort of a public health thing that they were so that the diseases would not be spread. And they refer to Jesus as master, a title that Luke uses as the disciples refer to Jesus. And they cry out to him, have mercy on us. And so they're looking for help. And Jesus says, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. So they weren't immediately healed there. He says, go to the priests. And because the law said that they were to go to the priests and and show themselves as clean, and then they would be declared as clean so that they could re-enter into society. And so we hear, it's almost like a little side note, and they were made clean. So on their way, they follow in obedience, and on their way, they are made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. And see, here Luke drops in two terms into this parable. This tenth person that turned around was a Samaritan. In other words, he was someone who was an outcast, considered a religious heretic, someone that the the people of Israel were not to be hanging around with. He was marginalized on the outside. And then at the end, it says he was a foreigner. Again, reiterating that the gospel, that Jesus Christ has come for all people, and that his healing was for all people. And so he then receives his healing. He comes back. He turns around. He had to make a decision that as he was going, he notices something. He realizes, I am now different. I've been made clean. And so what does he do? He turns around. He had to make a conscious decision to turn back, to turn around. That has deep theological meaning. We see that throughout the New Testament. We see it especially in Luke, that a person turns around, and when he turns around, he comes back. And he praises God and he gives thanks to Jesus. And Jesus blesses him then a second time. And he says, your faith has made you well. This term, made you well, in the Greek is really, your faith has saved. And so he, upon coming back, receives this holistic healing. There's more than just the physical healing, but he has now been saved Salvation has come to him. Grace and mercy, the full ministry of Jesus Christ has now been manifested, blessed on this person. The other nine had gone. They did nothing wrong. They were obedient. Jesus said, go, declare yourself to the priest. And so they went and they were healed. But what happens? They go there. And so when we look at gratitude, gratitude is about perception and articulation. It's about realizing what has happened to us and then articulating or expressing the ability then to give thanks. And so we see this here where where gratitude and faith start to come together that as we have faith, we need to use our faith. And gratitude starts to come into play then as we live into our faith. And it starts to change who we are and how we see everything around us as we live a life of gratitude. How many times have you been thankful for something but didn't say anything? Or have we become sort of um, so used to it? It's almost like a duty. We come in and, and we take stuff for granted. But yet this person who was on the outside who received so much from Jesus Christ realizes and sees the blessings and the healings and then out of, out of true response gives thanks to God and receives then the salvation receives then even more than just that physical healing. Because see, turning back is a redirection of our lives. It is a reorientation of who we are. You may say, well, how does this apply? Well, think about it. Within your your marriages, your relationships with your partner, what needs to be turned around? to be reoriented towards God. Maybe at school, 
You're trying to be somebody that you're really not, trying to impress friends. Do you have the ability to turn around and give thanks to God, to go back to God, to reorient, reorientate your life? A redirection. Because that is what this one person did. And we start looking at, well, how does this play into my life? Are you being somebody that you don't want to be? Can you turn around and come back and recognize what God is doing in your life and give thanks to Jesus Christ and then receive something more than just physical healing? Because when we pray, sometimes it's utilitarian. I'm going to pray for healing. Oh, I'm healed. Well, that worked. That was great. Or maybe sometimes when, um, when we pray, we start to see it in a way that's like, well, um, you know, I deserved that. I deserved that healing. And so it's almost like an entitlement. I pray for that, and I should be healed. But as we pray, does our prayer then start to become something more? When we pray... In an expectant way, what is God going to do in my life? How is God going to bring healing? How is God going to bring grace and mercy to me? Who will help be part of that process? Who will God use me in order to bless others? And so this person, it's not about how much faith they have. I mean, Jesus already took care of that issue when he said, if you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, and the disciples, he'd even ask that question, Lord, increase our faith. And Jesus is trying to get them and us to understand it's not about how much faith you have. It's about are you living into your faith? Are you noticing the blessings around you? Are you grateful? Are you living in a way that is filled with thanksgiving? And so these lepers who were on the outside... And if you looked at Numbers 5 or Leviticus 13 and 14, it tells the law by which the lepers were to live how to keep their distance, and they would position themselves near the traffic ways for charity. And you know, they were kind of on the outside. And we, sometimes when we talk about these people in the world, you know, we're supposed to help those who are marginalized or those on the outside. Do you ever have trouble relating to that? What does that really mean? How am I supposed to, you know, help maybe some homeless people that, you know, I've never seen before and I don't always come across every day? Well, we know we can do that through our givings and our offerings and our tithes. But let's start taking that into your own life. Who do you come across throughout your week that you're not really fond of? Who do you come across during the week that irks you? The person at the grocery store, the person that cuts you off in traffic, the person that you work with once in a while at work, you're like, oh, they're at this meeting, right? Those are the people that God wants us to look at How are we treating them? Because we have looked at them in a way that puts them on the margins, that puts them on the outside, that puts them on a way to say, we're much better because I'm a church-going Christian. But how is God looking to heal them, love them, save them? And how might God be using you in that situation to help them? Or how might God be just trying to have you hold up a mirror to yourself to say, yeah, I can make a change. I can make a difference. And if we then become grateful, we start to look around and see what God has given us and the blessings in our lives then, and how can we use that? What do you want to turn around? What in your life needs changed? Decisions that you keep making, games that you keep playing, lies that you keep perpetuating, some perception that you want out there in the world. What needs changed in your life? It's, maybe it's choices, it's addictions, whatever that is. What needs to be turned around in your life so that when you receive healing or answers to prayers that you've prayed for, because we've all prayed for things and some of those answers have been, uh, those prayers have been answered and some we, we haven't. But does it make you change your life even when you receive an answer to prayer? 
Does it cause you to say, God is so much at work in my life and who I am that I need to make other changes in my life? I need to turn around and reorient myself to have a redirection in what I'm doing, what I'm watching, who I'm hanging out with. All those questions so that I can live into more fully into all that God wants and has for me. Gratitude draws us out of ourselves into something larger and bigger and grander than anything that we can imagine and really joins us into this font of blessing itself. Gratitude is such a powerful emotion, such a a powerful way to live that it frees us from fear, releases us from anxiety, and emboldens us to do more than we could have imagined. You see, with gratitude, you start to realize that you are more than just who you label yourself to be. You know, recently we talked about our identity, right? And so you're more than just a person who has cancer. You're more than just a person who is sick. You're more than just, you know, and start inserting your identity right here. Who do you view yourself to be? You start realizing with a life of gratitude that you are more than just that. You're you're even more than a person maybe that's been healed from cancer. You're even more than a person who is a recovering addict. You're a person who's even more than just a, a person who's nice now instead of angry and bitter and negative all the time. With gratitude, we start to realize that you are, that we are a child of God and that we are whole through Christ's salvation and that we are accepted and beautiful just as the way we are. And when we realize that, when we realize that we are Christ's child and we have that power of Christ in us, then maybe, maybe that gives us the courage to turn around to Christ. Let us pray. Lord, as we take the steps throughout our life, give us the courage. Keep calling out to us so that each day we can make that new choice to turn around, to turn back to you. Amen. We hope you found today's message applicable to this season in your life. We know that the seeds that God has shown through his scripture or through the messages you've heard today, will help produce the fullness of God's love and grace within your life. If you have questions about what you've heard today, will you contact Pastor Kay and I, because we really want to support you in your faith journey. As always, we're thankful that you're part of what God is doing here at the Gender Road Christian Church, so that we can go beyond just worshiping God, but serving Jesus and helping others understand the goodness and love of Christ Jesus in this world.